Hey guys, welcome to Research Friday. I'm Dr. Moll. I'm Dr. Crisp. And today we're just going to review an article from a peer-reviewed journal. And, and really the purpose of this is to assess the clinical evidence that's available to us and see if we can line that up with our clinical experience or even mm -hmm. enhance our clinical experience. Absolutely. And if you'd like to check out the article, just check the link below. Uh, today we're going to look at an article called Electromyographic Analysis of the Three Subdivisions of Gluteus Medius During Weight-Bearing Exercises. Oh man, that's a mouthful. I, it took me like a day to learn how to Jeez. say all that fancy. Well so, and it's from uh, the Journal of Rehabilitation Therapy and Technology. Now it's from 2010. Yeah. You know, uh, but let's just talk about that. I mean, is, is there a date cutoff that research stops? No. Not really. Not only, really. I think only if you only reference old, old literature. Absolutely. But main of the goal is looking at research is, okay, I looked at this article. Is there anything else that's just come out? Correct. Um, there's a ton about uh, glute mead during activity. I mean, there's so many yeah. articles out there. But one of the main things is that I like is having different steps for rehab or managing people as we go through. And I think this article did a great job. Yeah, this is a common one discussed. I, there's some mm -hmm. phenomenal individuals out there in the research world that have really nailed this down, and they've looked at oh, glute meat activation. They've absolutely. looked at all the exercises that we commonly prescribe, and they've assessed level of priority, yes. le level of activation, yes. level of difficulty. Um, but this is just another great review. Um, and, and in summary, as you mentioned, as we were looking at the article before, really it helps us process how do I do my rehab and when that's the main thing because we all know you're gonna have everybody thinks oh this person's an athlete well they can go to these advanced exercises and no a lot of times they can't yeah because they're having pain and if you try to do an active rehab on them then they're gonna they're gonna try to push through the pain and then they're not gonna do the rehab correctly and then they're not gonna get the results that they want and that's that, that's the main thing yeah, one of the nice things about this is this is one of the first that I've seen in a little while mm -hmm. that takes a look at the glute meat activation, but in a weight-bearing position versus a supine position Absolutely. or a sideline position. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's beneficial because you do have some patients that you don't want to always rehab in a supine position or, or lateral position. Absolutely. You do Absolutely. have those that need to be weight-bearing. Um, yes, Whether it's sport-dependent, activity-dependent. Whether it's your individual that just stands at their workstation all day, mm -hmm. this is a good extra, a good article to review. How can I pr provide some sort of stability or activation, mm -hmm. but in a weight-bearing position? Absolutely. Um, and the nice thing about this one today is we will walk through what those three exercises are that the article actually references. Yep. We'll walk through those with yep. you so you can get a look at them as Picture. to how they work, will they work. Absolutely. And the three exercises they used was wall squat, pelvic drop, and then what they call wall press. Yeah, I, I did not hear about wall press before this. Me either. That's, um, that's what made me really interested in the article. I'm like, wall press, what's, what's that? You know, I've always heard of this wall squat, yep. you know, and the hip hike, you know, or I always call it a hip hike or pelvic drop. Um, but no, the wall, the wall press, what made, me, what made me get excited about it as a runner yeah, you know, because it's because it's almost in the position of a running position, um, and that that that's what got me excited. Yeah, so. one of the questions I think you always hear um, before we get into what those actual exercises look like is sometimes the debate about glute meat activation and EMG analysis is yeah. well, you're isolating a muscle, and we're not going to isolate a muscle in our rehab. Mm -hmm. That's kind of an old mentality. Yep. We don't need to put the patient in a position to say, all right, we're only activating glute med here. Um, but they were able to take a look at three, I would call them complex movements. Very much complex Because movements. they involve multiple joints and multiple muscle activations. Yes. But even out of all those three uh, movements, they really assessed which one stimulated glute med the most. Absolutely, um, they did. So there is some good assessment um, with multi-joint movements, but yet targeting what we want to enhance. Well, especially if you've got, let's just talk about some symptoms from a glute med weakness. We talk, start talking about patellofemoral pain syndrome. We start talking about trochanteric pain. We start yeah. low back. Low back. Hello. Very, very key. I mean, very, very, very key, especially if you've got any of these cases that aren't responding 
you need to look at the hip yep. all day, every day. Okay. Now, it was a small sample size, so okay. some may look at it and say, all right, 15 samples, let's toss it out. But once again, if we only lie heavily on clinical evidence, yep. we're going to shortchange our patients. Absolutely. But if we combine what's in the literature with our clinical experience, we can then evaluate the true outcomes reported by our patients. Absolutely we can. Absolutely so, we can. What do you say we take a look at these movements and okay. see how we can actually perform them in the correct manner and also just quickly identify which one of the three was the most successful? Absolutely. And, and before we do that, in the article it says the two that we're going to show you first, the wall squat yep. and the hip hike or pelvic drop, those are beginning stages. Okay. Your, your, your entry phase. Your entry phase. For those okay. that can tolerate it. For those that can tolerate okay. it without pain. And then the wall push, that's more your advanced one. That's like the fireworks, the grand finale. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. Love it. I, like I, it. I look forward to seeing these. I do too. All right, so let's review the exercise. So the first one is called wall squat. It's pretty much what it sounds like. So what you're going to do is you're going to about, about, eh, about foot off the wall. You're going to just push your squat down a little bit. Push your back against the wall, straighten this leg. Now the goal is you don't want the knee to go in. You want to keep the knee straight. That's wall squat. Next exercise is called pelvic drop. So what we're going to do is we're going to be strengthening the right side. You're going to stand on something, you know, a little bit of height. The main thing is you do not want pain to happen with this. Okay? So you're going to slightly take your foot off, go down, touch the heel, and come back up. Once again, we do not want the knee to go inward. Okay? And that is pelvic drop. Lax exercise is wall press. So, it's pretty simple. What the, you're going to do is if you're strengthening this side, you're going to bring your left leg up, keep it about eh, 90 at the foot, 60, 60. Then you're going to push your knee and your lower leg into the wall and you feel the opposite side glute really engage. And that's wall press. Okay. So we just got through looking at the three exercises. So for those who really like charts, like me, yeah. I'm a picture guy, um, in the article you'll see in figure five it actually talks about what percentage of the glutes fired when we did the wall press versus uh, pelvic drop and wall squat. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and also in the article they talk about wall squat, pelvic drop is more for to just get things moving better or engaging. And if you want strength, strength, you need to do the wall press. Wall press did seem to be the most, Im by or far, the, the best exercise out of the three. Absolutely, by so, far. Yeah, great information. Great article. Uh, a great review. Yes. And one that really helps us understand what our go-to exercises can be if we need to go in the weight-bearing position. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great article. Loved it. Loved it. So. Thanks for joining us for another Research Friday. I'm Dr. Mall. I'm Dr. Crisp. And if you just want to check out the article we just referenced, look at the link below. And we'll see you next Friday. See you next Friday. <laughs> Lean like a cholo. You got to... Yeah. I can't do that. Uh. <laughs> That's... That. Hi. Don't do that. <laughs> that doesn't look... What school are you from? Just get a refresher of what's happening in the clinical evidence world, the peer-reviewed journals. Absolutely. So and, the, and the great thing about it is that um, I messed up. What's See, the great thing about me it? Oh, confused. <laughs>